Marcus. Tim Canova, how are you, mate? I'm doing okay. How All right. You? Do you have you have a couple of minutes? I'm doing a show right now. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you about the uh, shenanigans. There's a video floating around. Shenanigans going on down there with uh, ballots going out sure. the back door. You got a minute? Okay. All yeah, right. Sure. Cool. So so I saw this. Uh, I, I I gazed at a video quickly, and uh, saw this video of. Uh, Shenanigans. So just just for the just for the record, Tim Canova uh, ran against Debbie Wasserman Schultz as an independent down in Florida, and uh, arguably beat her in 2016. So this is Tim Canova, uh, candidate. And uh, so so what do you know about it? What do you know about the show? Uh, well, uh, one of my supporters um, when uh, took this video when the elections um, closed at 7 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. So it would have been an hour or two later, I think, on election night. Uh, it shows uh, cars, private vehicles driving up, uh, basically removing uh, ballots uh, out of the cars and loading them into a rented truck. Uh, it seems to violate chain of custody protocols. Mm -hmm. um, we're not sure what happened to the ballots, where the truck went. Did they bring them to the supervisor's office? Uh, it's all uncertain. And the, and the speculation is that most of those were provisional ballots or some of them were actual ballots? What's oh, I, the, think, I think they were actual ballots. Al, it was actual. outside of a polling station. Right. Um, the polling station had just closed. And and Brenda Snipes, is the is that her name, the uh, the, the chairman she, down there? The yeah, what? the supervisor of elections. Right. Is she, has she commented on any of the the missing uh, boxes or nothing? Uh, not, that, not that I'm aware of. I have trouble keeping up with... Uh, Brenda Snipes' statements, I don't even try anymore, and mm -hmm. I wouldn't put much credence in anything I heard from Brenda Snipes' mouth, quite frankly. So, Tim, what was the what was the final uh, uh, official count down there? What was the percentage? Wasserman Schultz got what? Like, what was the percentage? Well, let me tell you, ahead, first tell of all, me. that in the weeks before the election, our campaign was on fire. We had many dozens of volunteers stepping forward. We had a Republican poll that was reported on showing a dead heat with Wasserman Schultz. Um, we always thought that we weren't going to get a fair shake because this supervisor of elections had destroyed the ballots from my 2016 run. And um, when the election results came out, I had something like 5% of the vote and Wasserman Schultz had 58%. So if you want to believe that suddenly Debbie Wasserman Schultz became the most popular Democrat in all of South Florida, and I received half as many votes as I did in a closed Democratic primary two years ago. I have a bridge I'll sell you in Brooklyn. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, Tim. Hey, Tim, let me Julius. ask you, do you, do you think, do you think that the, uh, we've been following on this channel, been following the, uh, the fake bomber that was down in Plantation, Florida. Do you think that, do you think that there's any connection there? Like, cause that story seemed to have been, you know, swept under the rug. And that guy is actually up here in the Southern district of New York being tried, you know, the super liberal Andrew, uh, it was delivered to uh, uh, Andrew Cuomo, the governor here in New York. And uh, you think there's any connection there? I really have no, no idea. Okay. Uh, it seemed like a strange story when it broke and Watson Mitchell's connection to it seemed quite strange as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what to make of it. Right. Uh, I wouldn't put anything past any of these folks. Uh, these are people who, have lied and they lie, steal, and cheat. Uh, they steal elections, um, and I, I don't know what they're capable of. Right. Well, I, you're you're still my hero, Tim. I mean, you you're you're fighting the well, good you're fighting the good I, fight. Don't don't. I yeah. appreciate it, Marcus. Uh, I'll tell you that uh, yeah. months ago, when we won our public records law suit against the supervisor of elections, and we won that mm -hmm. on summary judgment because she destroyed the paper ballots. These are felonies under state law. This, this is punishable by up to five years in prison. It violates federal and state criminal statutes. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was calling on Rick Scott, the, the Republican governor of Florida, to fire the supervisor and to replace her with somebody who's honest and competent. Mm -hmm. um, the governor did not do so. And from what I gathered at the time, um, it was because the Republicans had the same donors that the Democrats do, and they were basically going to protect Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I was a bigger enemy than uh, <laughs> to the system than Brenda Snipes. Mm -hmm. And I warned at the time 
uh, I, I basically told my lawyer who was in touch with people and the governor's staff to let the governor know that if he let this go, that Brenda Snipes is just going to screw him over in the general election. And that's, this is a serial rigger. They will keep rigging, rigging elections. And that fell on deaf ears. And uh, look what we have now. Right. No consequence. Felonies, 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 no consequence. That's what we exactly. get. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So where do we go from here, Tim? What's next? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of election experts who are looking into the circumstances of my um, uh, race. And, you know, it is something if, if you can rig elections by manipulating the software and come out with any results you want. Um, well, what result would you come out with? Two years ago, they um, tried to have a somewhat believable result, I guess. Uh, again, two years ago, we thought we won the race based on 10,000 door knocks a week and the kind of data that those kinds of numbers pull. Uh, it showed us defeating Wasserman Schultz. And they had me lose by 13 percentage points, which I guess they thought would be somewhat believable. I didn't believe it, and that's why I, I put in the public records request to inspect the ballots. This time, I don't think they even really care what what's considered believable or not. As long as it's printed in the press, it'll be reported. And that's what's happened. Uh, so I imagine a, a lot of folks around the country who read that I lost this badly and had 5% of the vote just think that, well, uh, he got lost in a blue wave or something. And nothing could be further from the truth. I, I, am, uh, I think if, you're, if you've been down here, most people who had been around uh, for the election here, they, they realize that uh, uh, the 5% figure or whatever my final tally was is absolutely ludicrous. They made sure that it would be punitive uh, to try to embarrass me, try to prevent me from seeking a recount. And I'm not sure. Uh, I'm talking to lawyers and we might still seek a recount. Uh, there's evidence that's coming out that's disturbing. Uh, you mentioned the film uh, about the chain of custody of the ballots, but that's only one thing that concerns us. In addition, uh, something like 50 to 75,000 new ballots were found. There's a 70,000 vote undercount in my district. Apparently, 70,000 people in my district who voted in this election, voted for governor and for senator, decided to leave the ballot blank on voting for um, uh, voting in my congressional campaign against Wasserman Schultz. That is magnitudes uh, larger than any other undercounts in the state. Um, and um, and then we also see that. As the supervisor discovers new ballots out of thin air uh, and uh, they're counting these new additional ballots, my vote count has actually gone down, not up. Right. So uh, that seems to defy the laws of mathematics. Uh, and uh, it might be consistent with um, a software manipulation. Uh, so folks are looking into it. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I, I can say I can't imagine why anyone any progressive would run for public office as long as we have an, uh, an election system like this with uh, electronic voting machines. Uh, now, it might be somewhat different in other jurisdictions around the country, but here in South Florida and Broward County, uh, they seem to uh, have no restraint in the kind of rigging they do. But we're fighting it and we want to expose it. And that's what this campaign was always all about. When I won the ballot destruction case and there were no consequences, no criminal investigations, I came very close to dropping out of the race and throwing up my arms. Uh, I stayed in mainly to try to expose the corruption. Uh, and I suppose in some ways this election result, while, you know, no one likes to be on the losing end of this type of a rig, uh, to anyone with eyes to see, they're, they're going to come to the conclusion that uh, this is really kind of bullshit and uh it hopefully will expose more of the corruption of the Broward supervisor of elections. And she's in a hot seat now of her own making. And let's see what happens. So, Tim, did you uh, did you get on the phone and, and congratulate her and concede the election? Uh, or you, you passed? No, no, I did not. Uh, you know, <laughs> I had years to ask. Ago, two years ago, when pressed by a reporter, if I conceded. I remember. Uh, I, I remember. Quoted as saying, I concede that Debbie Wasserman Schultz is a corporate stooge. <laughs> uh, I suppose if I had been asked this time, I would have conceded that the election system we have is a sham. Right. Did Bernie Did Bernie Sanders give you a call? Did he Did he give you a <laughs> call? <laughs> no, maybe I was in the shower. I missed you, it. you missed this call. No. <laughs> hey, Tim, thank you so much. Man. Anything else? Anything else? We're not uh, no, knowing. You want to go I, on the record? Thank you for covering this, Marcus. And, thank you. You know, I hope you continue to cover it. And you know, uh, my best wishes to all of your viewers. Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of them are supporters of mine, and I'm very grateful. 
yeah. for all the grassroots support that we've enjoyed over the last couple of years, and especially those who have stuck by us through thick and thin. Uh, you know, there are many people who um, come to a campaign like ours when it was rolling in money and 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 a lot of uh, good media coverage. Uh, the test, uh, I think, of uh, this grassroots movement is how many folks really stood by us during the tough times. And, and I just want to say how grateful I am for all mm. those out there who have been there for us. Mm. So, so by the way, I'm running against. Uh, I'm still, I'm still a uh, candidate for the United States Senate. By the way, I didn't beat Gillibrand. It's a write-in, but we're going to take a run at uh, Chuck the uh, Chuck the fuck uh, uh, Schumer. Oh, good. <laughs> why not? Fantastic. Right? Well, yeah. So why not? Absolutely. Exactly. That's, that's a, I, I wish you all the luck in the world and all the best wishes, and I'll help whenever whenever I can. Sounds good, Tim. Great talking to you, mate. Peace. Okay, Marcus, you too. Thanks for calling. Take right, care. Peace.